My name is Peter Jubilisco, and I'm here to discuss Friedrich's ataxia, which has been with me since I was a lad. It does not affect my intelligence, but many working in the disability sector seem to act as if Friedrich's ataxia is an attack on intelligence. But the reality of my ability to think can be highlighted by my academic qualifications, which are a double degree from Monash University, Master of Arts from Monash University and a Doctor of Philosophy from University of Melbourne. My PhD was achieved late into the progression of my disease when I was 43 years old. I'm now 61. Many say to me that this was a huge achievement and I am aware of some taken for granted misunderstandings about Friedrich's ataxia. At the time of my diagnosis, when I was 14, medical specialists told my parents that backwards I would not live much beyond the age of 30. One can only imagine their response if they were then told I would obtain a PhD. These days, I still perform research and Melbourne University gives me honorary fellow status. I have written and published over 100 articles and currently have now authored three books. However, there are many degrading effects to be battled with, such as blindness, very poor speech, hearing impairment, poor heart and limited mobility and coordination. But in all spheres of life, I've always tried my best, the jury is out, but there is still some chance that my writings may create positive change. This article explores the factors affecting vision, speech, hearing and some of their effects on communication for those people with Friedrich's ataxia. Introduction Vast technological revolutions have improved people's lives to a phenomenal degree. Do I dare to think about what my life would be like without these positive developments? This year, I turned 61 years old. As an individual with Friedrich's ataxia, I have been severely impacted by the limitations it places on my physical capabilities. The most notable and devastating damage has been done to my ability to communicate. For example, today I find it impossible to use my keyboard. The only way I can use my keyboard at all is with the help of specific academic support workers who, with training and experience, have learned to understand most of my speech. Even so, my speech dysarthria still hinders my ability to communicate with my support workers and to dictate what I need to say in my academic or everyday writings. My academic work is very important to me. This form of engagement has allowed me to give my hearty endorsement to the phrase the pen is mightier than the sword. It enables me to contribute my experience and knowledge as someone with a severe physical disability so that others like me will not be subjected to the same systematic blundering that I have had to go through, challenge and overcome. As a result, I have tried to develop this virtuous and motivating attitude, as encouraged by this phrase, more and more in all my literary pursuits over the last 11 years. However, there is always some doubt of whether my writing has an impact beyond discussion of the worsening symptoms of Friedrich's ataxia. My disability has not only caused my speech to worsen, but also my sight, so I have little idea of what goes on around me. Similarly, my hearing has also deteriorated, and I know this only too well. But my reaction to noise is full of my own peculiarities. For instance, I am sensitive to a lot of noise. I find it very difficult to concentrate on more than one sound at a time, so if there is more than one person talking to me, I will not be able to hear properly anything that is being said. Many may not realize how the combination of these specific symptoms of Friedrich's ataxia can lead to so much difficulty in communicating. To fight this, I must have complete faith in the knowledge that my support workers are always telling me the truth. Communication is everything to many individuals with Friedrich's ataxia, and that also means trust is vital. If this is taken away from us, we are not left with very much at all. But then there is the hope or faith that things have to improve. Nystagmus, when I was in my late 40s, I started to notice that my eyes refused to focus properly, a condition which was usually exacerbated by the glare of light. 
of individuals do have significant visual problems as a result of Friedrich's ataxia. This is due to damage to the nerves that detect visual stimuli as well as control of the movement of the eyes. Friedrich's ataxia may involve several parts of the body, but in the brain its main effects are on the cerebellum. The cerebellum is concerned with what is loosely termed backward coordination. When cerebellar function is impaired, it results in what is often summarized as backward ataxia, from the Greek definition for backward lack of order. Increasingly it is recognized that the cerebellum exerts effects beyond the coordination of movement, but as we are dealing with movement or backward motor function here it may be worth mentioning that the cerebellum can, in part, be viewed as an error detection system. Here, its role is to ensure that the actual movement carried out reflects the intended movement. When I wish to pick up a piece of food with my fork, the intended action involves accurate placement of the fork through the food, and not to one side of where the food is sitting on my plate. This theme of coordinated movement affects a wide range of motor functions that include the upper and lower limbs, balance and walking, speech, swallowing and the movement of the eyes. In order to direct eye gaze at what we would like to back quote see, to track a visual target of interest, or jump rapidly between visual targets of interest, say a ball, that suddenly enters the periphery of our vision, we need to make accurate eye movements, that are directed with exactitude to the target of interest, and stay on the target, even when a torus is in motion. This requires constant small corrections and pinpoint accuracy as well as the ability to hold the eyes back quite still, gaze fixation, when necessary. There are a range of alterations to eye movements that may arise from impairment of the cerebellum and or its connections, including to the stem of the brain. The usual smooth tracking movements of the eyes, smooth pursuit, as they follow a slow moving object, such as a person walking past you, are broken up or back quite choppy and this reflects constant errors in the eye tracking as a result of the inaccurate eye movement which remain inadequately corrected by the impaired cerebellum. Nystagmus, which generally manifests as a quick but small flicking movement of the eye, is common in Friedrich's ataxia. Similarly, small backward wobbles in eye movements called backward square wave jerks are seen, and along with a less common ocular flutter, bursts of small back to back eye movements represent a deficit in the ability of the cerebellum to hold the eyes still, fixation. In the aggregate, these eye movements may be described as backward dancing eyes. These eye movements may or may not interfere with a person's subjective vision, and to some degree this relies on the brain's ability to filter out the disturbance to vision. The second manifestation of Friedrich is its action that may adversely affect vision involves the eyes themselves, as opposed to eye movements. Optic neuropathy describes damage to the optic nerve, not actually to a nerve, but to a frontal projection of the brain to the back of the eye. The optic nerves carry visual backward information from the eye to the backward seeing portion of the brain, the occipital lobe. Where the optic neuropathy of Friedrich's ataxia has an effect on vision, it tends to affect the clarity or ability to distinguish small shapes, visual acuity. What this means practically to a person with Friedrich's ataxia is that it may be difficult to focus on a screen, print or small detail of an object. In addition, damage to the optic nerves means that visual acuity is significantly impaired and on occasion leading to complete blindness. As a result of my free reach is a texture I live with both causes of visual impairment. The third way in which free reach is a texture may affect vision involves the inner ear balance mechanism or vestibular system. This system is important for maintaining clear vision during head movement, for example as one is walking or rolling along the footpath. It does so by cancelling out any movement of the eyes relative to what we are looking at, for instance as our head is bobbing up and down. When both vestibular mechanisms are underactive, as is the case in most people with Friedrich's ataxia, there is a tendency for things to look unclear when we are moving. This is termed motion-induced oscillopsia, and may also be seen when only the cerebellum is affected by a disease, and so, 
people with Friedrich's ataxia have two potential reasons for experiencing this phenomenon. Currently, there are many options available to make communicating easier for someone like me. That being said, there are not many that are specifically catered to my individual needs. An example of this is eye gaze. Eye gaze is a communication software that tracks the eye movements of the individual and allows them to type through an on-screen keyboard. For this, you have to be able to focus on the keys, to spell out the words, and make corrections accordingly. For someone like me, however, this will not work. My nystagmus is very severe and causes my eyes to frequently move rapidly. It is the root cause of my blindness, and it will never allow me to focus on any keys on the screen. Dysarthria and auditory neuropathy, another result of the cerebellum's involvement in Friedrich's ataxia is on speech. Given the role of the cerebellum in coordinating muscle movements and the many rapid and precise movements of muscles in the mouth and tongue to produce clear speech, it is not unexpected that this component of communication is often impacted. Backquote cerebral dysarthria describes the typical speech referable to Friedrich's ataxia and is characterized by reduced clarity or slurring of words, as well as variability in volume and speed of speech production. The classic slurred speech of one who is intoxicated is due to the effects of alcohol on their speech and so gives an example of the speech difficulties people with Friedrich's ataxia may contend with. It is unrelated to problems with understanding language. This involves deteriorating ability to speak and convey my thoughts. The failure of communication has also played a fundamental role in my growing and increasing loss of control, and so I am unable to speak up to challenge these persistent stereotypes that I have had to face on a daily basis. Communication enables us to surmount many of the challenges we face in life's pursuits. But when there is a failure in the ability to communicate, then a situation arises in which those who can communicate rarely take on board and may even be incapable of expressing empathy. An additional potential manifestation of Friedrich's ataxia that may interfere with communication is hearing. Unlike many other causes of hearing loss, in Friedrich's ataxia it is the nerve which carries the sound back quote information from the ear or hearing apparatus to the brain, which appears to be involved, or auditory neuropathy. As the ear itself is usually unaffected, Hearing aids are of little or no use, although some benefit from specialized devices may be derived. What I'm trying to say is this, disability can be progressive and that means that supportive regimes for those subjected to physiological deterioration need to be progressive too. The progress needs deepened insight by those providing care into what is going on. That is, the support needs to change and adapt continuously to meet the actual situation and the distressing development that the person is confronting. I can imagine that, just as it is hard for me to keep living with this deterioration, it may be hard for my carers too. After all, they are caring and careful and that means being open and vulnerable. My Freak speech, severely limited vision through nystagmus and difficulty in hearing, has also limited the possibility of assistance through medical aids. Friedrich's ataxia is a very rare and individualized disability, and as a result it doesn't fit in with generalized medical theory. Because I depend heavily on my computer to communicate, I was advised to use a software known as Grid3. It is a basic software that uses very simplistic movements to make it function, and the on-screen keyboard emits lights and sounds to indicate which letters or words you can click on. It uses a switch and sound cues which I found was helpful to me for some time. Recently, in an effort to improve my speech, I participated in a study with the University of Melbourne. The study involved the use of a tablet to give me speech cues that I would repeat five days a week for four weeks. It was repetitive work and at times felt tedious. I would also have to listen to recordings of my speech exercises from the previous day. For someone like me, hearing back these recordings was both devastating and motivating. 
It gave me the strength to want to improve that much more, even though it was painful, if not somewhat embarrassing. In conclusion, my main barriers to communication, anistagma and dysarthria, which are the main controlling objects of my disability, and are therefore fundamental in the use of Friedrich's ataxia. Thank you to Amanda, Danny, Lena, Sarah, Princess for being beautiful people in their assistance of me in finishing this work. A big thank you to Bruce Wynn and all his work that has helped bring me to this stage, and special thanks to Associate Professor David Smidlitz in helping me to edit works on nystagmus, dysarthria and Friedrich's ataxia. Email peter.gibilisco at unimelp.edu.au